So we are starting off today's story with Judas. For those who don't know who he is, Judas was one of the twelve disciples of Jesus. He followed Jesus and listened to the things Jesus preached. Judas was Jesus' friend at first, but then sometime later, he decided that he did not want to be Jesus' friend anymore. In fact, he decided that he would do something very bad to Jesus. Uh-oh. You see, not everyone liked Jesus and followed him. There were, of course, some other people that did not like Jesus at all. The group of people who did not like Jesus was the leaders of God's people. But the important part here is that they were not good leaders. They did not like the fact that the people listened to Jesus instead of them. That's why they hated Jesus so much. They hated him so much that they wanted to kill him. How great! We have Judas who no longer wants to be Jesus' friend, and we have a group of Jewish leaders that hate Jesus so much that they want to kill him. So, Judas went to go see these Jewish leaders to make a plan to hurt Jesus. They decided that they would arrest Jesus and make him stop preaching about God. The Jewish leaders told Judas they would pay him 30 pieces of silver if he would help them find Jesus. And guess what Judas did? Yes, he should have rejected it, but instead he said, yes, you can have Jesus. So a little background story here is that it was the Passover. And Passover was a time where the Jews celebrated their freedom from slavery. And so families and friends gathered and ate together. So it was same for the disciples as all of them gathered together and ate with Jesus, including Judas. However, before the meal was over, Judas left to go tell the Jewish leaders where Jesus was. Yikes, sneaky boy. The shocking thing here is that Jesus already knew what was going to happen, even before it happened. So sad, but he knew that he was going to die soon. He knew that Judas was going to betray him. He also knew that the other disciples would not help him either. All these things would happen because Jesus had to die on the cross. If Jesus did not die on the cross, then he would not be able to save people from their sins. Jesus decided that he needed to pray to God to help him have courage. If you guys think about what's happening right now, if Jesus knew that he was going to die on the cross, then that means he already knew how much pain he was going to have to endure. Wow. I don't think I can have the courage to die for someone else, knowing how much it's going to hurt. Can you guys? Well, so after the meal, he decided to go somewhere quiet where Jesus can pray. You see, during the meal, Jesus already told his disciples that he was going to die soon. He also told them that they would all leave him. That made the disciples very sad and they did not believe Jesus. They were huffing and saying, What? We leave you? No way! Peter even stood up right away and yelled, Not me, Jesus! I will never leave you! Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, you will leave me. You will deny me three times before the rooster crows in the morning. Well, hopefully you guys know the story about Peter, because my question to you guys is, does Peter actually deny Jesus three times before the rooster cries in the morning? Well, the answer is yes. So what Jesus is saying is all true. So after eating the meal, Jesus and the disciples left and went to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus told his disciples to wait while he went ahead to pray. Then he asked only Peter, James, and John to come with him. 
When they got to a place where they could be alone, Jesus told Peter, James, and John to wait and stand guard while Jesus prayed by himself. Jesus told them, You guys should pray too. Bad things are going to happen and you will need courage to be good. So Jesus went ahead and prayed to God. He asked God to help him to do the right thing. He did not want to have to die, but he wanted to do it if that is what God wanted him to do. Jesus went back to the three disciples to check on them. However, they were not praying like Jesus had told them to. Guess what they were doing instead? They were sleeping. Ugh, Jesus told them to wake up. Jesus went back and prayed two more times. However, each time he came back, he found Peter, James, and John sleeping again and again. So the last time, Jesus told them to wake up because a crowd of people were coming with sticks and swords. And guess who was leading the crowd of people? Yes, it was Judas. He was bringing the people to arrest Jesus. So before the crowd reached Jesus to arrest him, they asked Judas, How will we know which men to arrest? Judas told them, Just watch me. Jesus is my teacher, so I will kiss him on the cheek. Then you will know which one to arrest. You see, this was normal since in those times, students used to kiss their teacher on the cheek when they saw them. When Judas came to Jesus, he kissed him on the cheek. Then the men with the sticks and swords arrested Jesus right away and started to take him away. Peter could not believe what was happening. He was very angry and upset. He could not believe that they were going to arrest Jesus. This is because Peter, and like everyone knows, that Jesus had done nothing wrong. So, Peter could not hold his anger anymore and pulled out a sword and tried to protect Jesus. While protecting Jesus, he cut off the ears of a servant of one of the Jewish leaders. Right then, Jesus told Peter to stop fighting. Jesus was not happy with what Peter had just done. Then, Jesus put his hand on the servant's ear and the man's ear was healed. The reason why Jesus did not try to run away or resist was because he knew that God wanted him to go with these men. So Jesus left with them. He did not even fight them. All the disciples were very frightened and scared. They all ran away so they would not be arrested. And just like how Jesus said they would leave him earlier, Jesus' followers actually left him. So everything came true. Now the soldiers brought Jesus to Pilate, the governor at the time in the very early in the morning. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of Jews? Jesus replied, Yes, I am. This upset, this made the chief, chief priest angry because they were jealous of Jesus and how he made so many Jewish friends. Pilate listened to the complaints of the people that brought Jesus, but he couldn't find any reason to punish him. So Pilate questioned Jesus with more questions, but Jesus did not stick up for himself. And it's all because Jesus knew that they wouldn't listen anyways. And also at the same time, Jesus had done nothing wrong, so he didn't need to explain anything. After questioning, questioning Jesus, Pilate called together the priests, the rulers, and the people. He said to them, I have talked to Jesus, but I found no reason to kill him. No duh, that's because Jesus has done nothing wrong till now, but of course, they will never accept the truth. Ugh. When the people heard that they found no reason to kill Jesus, they became more violent, shouting, We want Jesus to die! Release Barabbas instead! Um, that's crazy, because Barabbas had been in jail for killing someone. 
but the people wanted him to be free and Jesus to be punished instead. Um, that is so not right. I know that you guys are probably agreeing with me right now, but honestly, Pilate was in the middle of peer pressure. That's because the priest went around telling people lies about Jesus so that the people would be afraid of Jesus and would want to kill him. That is why the people all wanted Jesus to be punished. Pilate did not like this situation one bit. He actually wanted to let Jesus go because, hello, Jesus is innocent. So he tried to talk to the people, but the people all disagreed. They just kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate tried again, yelling, what has Jesus done wrong? I can punish him, but then I must let him go. He doesn't deserve to die. But the people just shouted louder to crucify Jesus. So Pilate had no choice and wanted to please the crowd. So he freed Barabbas and sent Jesus to die. Wow. The soldiers right away led Jesus into the palace and made him put on an old royal robe and they twisted together a crown of thorn to put on his head. Man, imagine someone stabbing your head with needles. It hurts, right? Well, the soldiers didn't stop there. They made fun of him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! They didn't understand that he was a king, and so that's why they made fun of him. Next, the soldiers led Jesus towards a hill. They made him carry the cross on his back. Just letting you guys know, the cross was very heavy. It was like carrying a sofa by yourself. But remember, this is carrying the sofa while bleeding since you have a thorn crown on your head and they're hitting you all over your body. It's not a surprise that Jesus couldn't carry the whole way, but the soldiers continue to whip his back, and it hurt so much that Jesus couldn't handle the weight of the cross on his shoulders. So a man named Simon happened to be near Jesus when Jesus fell, and so the soldiers grabbed him and made Simon carry the cross the rest of the way. The soldiers offered Jesus wine mixed with myrrh. This was supposed to help make it less painful, but Jesus did not have any. When they reached the top of the hill, they nailed Jesus to the cross. There were three crosses total. So Jesus was in the middle, and there were criminals on his right and on his left. Pilate made a sign where it said why Jesus was being punished for. And it said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The soldiers watched Jesus and continued to make fun of him. They even divided up his clothes to be even more mean. Some people walked by and shouted, You saved others, but why can't you save yourself? You see here, Jesus could have saved himself, but he chose not to. And that's because he wanted to save us instead. So later in the day, Jesus could not handle the pain any longer. And he said, it is finished. That is when Jesus bowed his head and went to heaven. Suddenly, a huge curtain that hung at the temple was torn in half from the top to bottom. And a man that had wanted to see Jesus to die saw all of this and he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. He realized that he had been wrong about Jesus. I know that you guys are probably thinking that this is a really sad story, but it's actually one of the greatest stories of all. That's because Jesus died knowing that you guys would do sinful things things that you're not supposed to and that includes not obeying your parents saying something mean to your sister or brother or not telling the truth jesus died for everybody's sin so now when we ask god to forgive us and if we truly are sorry for what we've done jesus will act like it never happened 
That's right. He will forget what we did if we repent. Now, that doesn't mean that we should ever make the same mistake again. Because by doing that, it's like we're hurting Jesus all over again. So next time you do something you're not supposed to, remember to say sorry to Jesus and remember what he did for you. The Story of Easter Jesus' Sacrifice This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God and so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus ah, come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. When the time came for Jesus to die and take away the sins of all the world, Jesus had one final meal with his friends. During this meal, Jesus told his followers that the time had come for him to leave them. Huh? Peter asked, where are you going? Jesus told him Peter couldn't follow him now. What? But that he would follow him later. What is that? But Peter said, why can't I come now? I'm ready to die for you. Jesus said, die for me, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. Then Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives so Jesus could pray. Along the way, Jesus told his followers that they would all abandon him. Uh -oh. But Peter said, even if everyone else leaves you, I never will. Jesus said, Peter. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. But Peter wouldn't believe it and vowed that he would stay with Jesus until the very end. The other disciples vowed the same. Yeah, I Later on that night, Jesus was arrested by men sent by the religious teachers and priests. Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? So you're the one! I am he. <laughs> we won't let them take you. Put your sword back into its sheath. Shall I not drink from the cup of suffering the Father has given me? My lord, permit even this. Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me. But this is your moment. The time when the power of darkness reigns. Peter tried to fight for Jesus. And he cut off the ear of one of the guards. But Jesus healed the guard and went quietly with the captors. All the disciples scattered just as Jesus told them they would. The men led Jesus away to the house of the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate 
and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. What? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God.